With recent news of Jack and Daxter possibly getting a movie adaptation, please don't let the guy who made this shit direct it. It made me wonder if we'd ever see them again. It also made me want to do one thing. Play the entire series! Not only are we going to play them, we're going to go for all four platinum trophies. For this video, we're going to focus on the first game. Jack and Daxter, The Precursor Legacy. The last time I played this game, I was like eight, but now that I'm 29 years old, with some inspiration from fellow creators I Am Rob and Jack Sather, and in search of any bit of youthfulness that I can retain, I felt like it was time to finally relive this series that I've loved my entire life. Hold on with me because it takes a little bit to get to that first trophy, but I want to make sure I'm telling you the story. We first meet Jack and Daxter, two human kids who like to cause mischief, heading to Misty Island, a dark, mysterious island located just off their hometown of Sandover Village. Even though Samus, the green sage, has told them to never go there. Love this. I played this when I was a little kid and I forgot. Like I remember the story, but I forget a lot of it. So it's like awesome to relive this when I can understand storytelling. While there, they eavesdrop on two odd looking individuals as they tell an army of lurkers to continue looking for eco and precursor artifacts on the island and from any villagers. Continue your search for artifacts and eco. If the locals possess precursor items, you know what to do. Deal harshly with anybody who strays from the village. We will attack it in due time. While sneaking around, they come across a pool of dark eco. <laughs> What is that dark ooze? And Daxter gets knocked into it on accident by Jack as he was fighting a lurker that spotted them. <laughs> Daxter was launched out of the dark ooze in his new marsupial form. Man, that stung! I told you we shouldn't have come here, and you listened! Fun fact, Daxter is now an otso, a mixture of an otter and a weasel. Naughty Dog made most animals like this in the series. When they return to the village, Samus is disappointed in them. What in green tarnation? Look, old man! Are you gonna keep yapping, or are you gonna help me out of this mess? I'm gonna keep yapping, because in my professional opinion, the change is an improvement. And then states that the only person who would know enough to change Daxter back is Gol Acheron, the dark eco-sage, who lived far to the north. For some reason, neither of them told Samus about the lurkers they saw on the island. I get it for Jack being a mute, but it's surprising for the loudmouth Daxter. Kira, Samus's daughter, offers to help them with her zoomer bike, but it needs 20 power cells to power up its heat shield to get through Fire Canyon. Before Jack and Daxter leave, Samus makes them run through a training course where we learn about all the collectibles we have to find throughout the game. This is a power cell, the most important precursor artifact you can find. To hit things with a greater force, that's Blue Eco, which contains the energy of motion. And where we get our first trophy, for opening the precursor door. Open says me. After this, we head down to Sandover Village and start talking to the locals to complete tasks and begin gathering the power cells. Yee-haw! The Orbist. Who awakens the Oracle? Also, there are three precursor oracles throughout the game that give you power cells in exchange for precursor orbs. Next, we go to Sentinel Beach and grab a couple power cells, a ton of collectibles, race a giant pelican. Another fun fact, you can actually blow that pelican up. Give me that. Punch an egg off a cliff. Eggs over hard. And unblock some green eco vents. There were a few more things to collect from there, but I couldn't just yet because I needed to complete things later in the game. So instead we headed over to the Forbidden Jungle. Here we're gathering some more power cells so we can progress the story, fix a big energy machine that supplies energy to Sandover Village, and helps the mayor win back his re-election. Happy, happy steps. Die a few times. <clears throat> I'm like, uh, such a... Yuck. Revenant. As well as do some stress inducing fishing. You did it! 
did you it. You caught 200 pounds of fish. As I was going through this area, I didn't realize there was more to complete. So we'll be coming back here later to finish out some more missions and collectibles. Next, we go back and talk to Kira. Hey, baby, what you working on? Where she tells us that she is working on a solution to teleport to Zoomers all over the world. And that we should look out for them whenever we go to explore Misty Island and wherever else we travel. With that in mind, we head back to Misty Island for the next bit of exploring. Misty Island has a ton of lurkers to defeat while running around looking for collectibles. While we're here, we find the Red Eco for the first time, capture the artist's muse. I said capture? Come on. Okay, we'll come back to that. We survived an ambush. It's an ambush, Jack! It's an ambush! I don't want this smoke. You've got to be fucking kidding me. Say goodnight, Jack. Tonight's feature event. Cousin. Then we use the zoomer to stop lurkers flying around on these air balloon-like bikes contraptions that honestly don't seem too efficient, but this gave us top goes the lurker. And lastly, we stop the lurkers from shooting the precursor silo with a cannon and unleash Dark Eco into the world. Oh yeah, we finally did this. I'm amused. We also got power lunch trophy for collecting 25 power cells. After this, we have enough power cells to power up that heat shield and travel through the fire canyon on the zoomer, grabbing collectibles along the way. Zoom. The path through fire canyon brings us to the next major area, Rock Village. Located here is the Blue Sage's hut, but the Blue Sage himself is nowhere to be found and his hut is destroyed. Samus and Kira come through the teleporter and everyone notices that the entire village is under attack by a giant troll named Claw, who is throwing giant flaming boulders at the village. Kind of fits, you know, Rock Village. And Jack notices something else. Get your shit together, Jack. Her dad's right there. We've got to gather 45 total power cells if we want to power up that machine to move the boulder and kick Claw's ass. Rock Village has a total of three areas that branch off from it where we can gather the collectibles we need to 100% the game and progress the story. But there are also collectibles and missions inside of Rock Village that we need to complete. Also, the hardest blue eco precursor orb drawer tower thing in this game. The first area we went to was the Lost Precursor City, which had a bunch of cool puzzles and old precursor technology all throughout while we gathered more of the collectibles. We also got the Buzzed Trophy for collecting 49 scout flies. We opened a pod that floats up to Rock Village and had a power cell on top that I just couldn't figure out how to get to. We didn't finish everything down there, so we'll come back. Next we gave the Crying Soldier 90 precursor orbs to fix the bridge to the mountain pass where Claw was located. After that, we went to the Precursor Basin, which you can only reach by the Zoomer. Here we herded some moles, killed some lurkers, which is catch cane, did some obstacle courses, purple pain, I got the blues, removed the dark eco from some plants, Green thumb. And competed in a time trial race. Let's just say I probably shouldn't try and fill my lifelong childhood dream of being a race car driver. Somehow I got even worse the third time. But with the fourth attempt, we finally did it, so we went back to the gambler to receive our reward. Speedy fast. Next, we met up with Kira at the energy machine where she used the power cells we just gathered to power the machine and lift the boulder out of the way so we could finally face the claw. My dumbass thought I could kick these flaming boulders. Dude, my jumping skills are shit. Once I got out of my own way, we put a hurting on this oversized lurker and kicked his ass to the curb. Declawed. 
Now to the next zoomer section, the mountain pass, where we have to chase some flying lurkers who are headed for a detonator that will blow up the entire passage. Destroy the detonator or it's off! We did it! We stopped them from blowing up! Zoom, zoom. The mountain pass brings us to the volcanic crater and the red sage's lab. Holy yakow! While at the Red Sage's lab, some unexpected visitors showed up to really shit on Daxter's day. <laughs> Those strange individuals they saw on Misty Island turn out to be Gaul Acheron, the Dark Eco Sage, and his sister Maya that we have been looking for this entire time. They are the ones who have kidnapped the other sages and are going to use them to open the underground Dark Eco silos by using a precursor robot. Wait a minute! That was Gaul? The same Gull who's supposed to change me back? Gull is the guy trying to kill us? I'm doomed. We may all be doomed. If they open the silos, the Dark Eco will twist and destroy everything it touches. We simply must get to their citadel to stop them. Now to get to the citadel, we had to gather more power cells. While in the volcanic crater, we did the usual gathering of collectibles, found the oracle, and met some goofy miners who end up giving us power cells, and hints at how to open an eco vent on the snowy mountain. We also got the power cords trophy for collecting 50 power cells. From here, we went down into the spider cave. Let me guess, there are spiders in the spider caves, right? While in here, we gather a few trophies. The Orberator Trophy for collecting a thousand Precursor Orbs, and Kerblam for destroying the Dark Eco Crystals. The next location was Snowy Mountain, where we got the It's Dark In Here Trophy for surviving the Lurker Infested Cave, and the It's Cold Out Here Trophy for defeating the three Lurker Glacier Troopers. We figured out how to open the Yellow Eco Vents throughout the world, which will come in handy to complete some collectibles. Remember how I said I didn't finish everything at the Forbidden Jungle? Yeah, we decided to backtrack to finish out the things I missed there and at Sentinel Beach. We defeated the Dark Eco Plant, which was super easy, and got the Black Thumb Trophy. Then we opened the Blue Eco Vents throughout the world. Doing this let me climb to the top of the Sentinel Tower and get the Power Cell on Sentinel Beach. Next we went back to Rock Village to clear out the one area I missed. Boggy Swamp. Here we got ambushed. Twist and shout. Help the hillbilly fend off some swamp rats by shooting fireballs at them. Well, fry my hide. You sure know how to shoot. Thanks a heap for the help. Hungry. Then blew up some anchors for a Zeppelin balloon and saw it fly away. The Led Zeppelin. After that, I went back and gathered the remaining collectibles in the Lost Precursor City. But do you remember that power cell on top of the pod that I couldn't get? That's the last thing I needed and I wasn't about to let this thing hold me back. I might fail again, but I won't leave until I get this. I guess I might have built this up a little too much in my head. To progress the story, we had to go through the lava tube on the zoomer to get to Gull and Maya's citadel. Reaching the other side of the lava tube gave us... Zoom, zoom, zoom. Kira then comes through the teleporter and tells us that Samus is missing and she thinks that Gull and Maya might have kidnapped him as well. From there, we enter the Citadel to rescue all four sages and put a stop to Gull and Maya once and for all. When we get in there, Samus tells us that Gull and Maya are reconstructing the remains of a precursor robot to use against them in the world and are forcing the sages to power it. The Citadel featured some of the toughest puzzles in the game, but we managed to get through them all and free the sages. No, set me free. Good work, fellas. Hey, set me free. Who would have thought I'd live to see the day when I needed to be rescued by a boy and his muskrat? Uh. You free. You know how long I've been in here? What took you so long? Then we got the totally buzzed out trophy for collecting all 112 of the scout flies in the game and the maximum power trophy for collecting all 101 power cells. With that, we freed Samus. Good work, boys. You're real heroes now. I'll combine my green eco power with the other three sages, and together we'll open the shield door surrounding the precursor robot. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good start. And then after you guys open that shield, what are you gonna do about the robot? Nothing, Daxter. 
We have to keep the shield open. It's up to you two to figure out how to destroy the robot. Oh, great. I get to help the guy that turned me into a furball destroy the only person who can turn me back! From there, the sages put their eco powers together to bring the energy shield down around the robot so that Jack and Daxter could figure out how to bring it down. Gull and Maya fly up and speak some nonsense, and then take over the robot. We take the elevator to the top of the citadel and then the final battle begins. The first phase of the fight, we have to shoot the laser eye out of the robot to destroy it, and then they shoot a giant bomb at the platform that we have to use an eco jump pad to avoid. And let's just say I didn't stick the landing. We kept pushing forward though, but they were putting a hurting on us. We finally did it! You just won't give up, will you? I didn't know! It does exist! Then Daxter was left with a choice only a hero My could ego. make. That could be the stuff to chain me back! Or it might stop that robot. Hmm. Stay fuzzy, save the world. Choices. Okay, fine. We'll save the world. But do it quickly before I change my mind! With the light eco, Jack was able to destroy the robot. Do something! Now that they saved the world, Jack and Dexter decided to break out their top tier dancing skills. Now, Samus stops being a dick to Jack and Daxter. Well, it looks like I may have been too hard on you boys. Daxter came to terms with being an awesome. Daxter, now we can't change you back. Don't worry about me, baby. You know what they say. Big things come in small packages. And the Red Sage said that Kira would be a good sage. And Kira, without your help and ingenuity, none of this would have been possible. <laughs> Perhaps we've found another sage. And Gaul and Maya should be dead. Yes, Gaul and Maya. The Dark Eco probably destroyed them. Yeah, probably. Ah, who cares? Bring him on! We can take him again! Right, Jack? Ha! You thought that was the ending. But if you collect all power cells in the game, you get a secret ending. Holy yakko! What could that be? Wow! It's an ancient precursor door! It looks like it will only open if we fill all 100 holes with power cells. Uh, we're heroes, remember? We have 100 power cells. I guess you'll just have to wait until the Jack 2 video to see what was behind that door. Or Google it. The game has been out for like 20 fucking years. Oh wait, we forgot something. We still didn't get the Platinum Trophy. In fact, we're missing one last thing. We didn't get all of the Precursor Orbs in Rock City. It's time for one last backtrack. I searched all over and came to the conclusion that the last 20 orbs are in that damn eco drawer we couldn't get to. This is it. This is what it all comes down to. Can I get this frustratingly annoying task completed? You will be a Precursor Hero. Superior Orberator? What 
when you hear it. Not no, baby. Thank you for sticking around on this adventure with me, and be on the lookout for the next video, which will be on Starfield. And then we'll come back for Jack 2, which will have a, let's say, a dark twist. Whoa!